Positive feedback is similar to negative feedback in terms of the components, those five boxes, um, and that the final response affects the process. But instead of turning off the system, it's going to amplify the system. And this means that it's not going to maintain a variable. It's going to instead amplify and signals to complete processes, so to get things done. So it's going not going to directly maintain homeostasis. It's going to be involved in processes that are necessary for long-term functioning, but not main doesn't directly maintain regulated variables. So let's start actually by comparing these a little bit more um, with a visual. Um, it's still important for functioning of organisms, right? So in negative feedback, remember that we have a stimulus and then a response in between there. There's we've got our sensor. A control center and target, but our response is ultimately going to feedback and counteract our stimulus to turn the system off. So turn system off. Whether that system is turning up or down something, right, increase or decreasing temperature, regardless of that, we're turning the system off. Positive feedback is going to instead amplify the system amplify the stimulus and response. Um, so reinforce. So we're going to, the response is actually going to further amplify the stimulus um, instead of removing it. The response sends the regulated variable even farther away from its normal value, its homeostatic value, if it has one. Um, this results in an ever increasing response and sends the system temporarily out of control, right? This is not something, it has very limited um, thing, processes that are regulated or controlled by positive feedback because it results in an out of control, um, which is more unique. Our bodies usually want to be, regulate things within a very narrow range. With positive feedback, we're getting way out of that range. Some outside intervention is then required to stop the response. So let's say we had body temperature and it was going up and down and negative feedback is maintaining that. If we accidentally had positive feedback instead, so this say this is um, sweating, cools us down. Let's say when we get up here, instead of sweating, our response was shivering. Well, shivering warms us up. We're going to further amplify our temperature. Um, if we don't turn off, if we have the wrong response. Um, for, actually, maybe more sense if we have shivering here. We want our shivering to turn off when we reach back to set point. If it doesn't turn off, um, we're going to amplify the system out of control. So this is not an example of something that uses positive feedback. Things that do use the positive feedback are childbirth, milk letdown, um, blood clotting, and other inflammatory responses. And actually the action potential um, is another one. But it's a pretty, pretty rare. Okay, learning check for you here. And then a little bit more. So I want to give an example of positive feedback. One I said was childbirth. So during childbirth, the uterus starts to contract. Contract. Let me write down childbirth. Example. And that's the initiation of this process. This is a rare thing, right? This is not something you're trying to maintain any sort of conditions every day. You're trying, the goal is get the baby out. So it's a process that is completed and done. Positive feedback is gonna help this happen quickly. So this is what that looks like. Um, in labor, the baby is dropping um, due to having grown and other changes in the body, other hormones. This causes stretch of this onto the cervix. This stretch, is a um, sorry. The stretch is a stimulus 
that causes hormone release from the brain. So we actually have ENS releasing that oxytocin and causing uterine contractions. Oxytocin is the output signal. And then the uterus itself is going to be the target. The uterine contractions are the um, actual response. The main thing here is that the release of oxytocin causes more contractions, which causes more stretch because the baby is pushing down more on the cervix. And that's what makes it a positive feedback loop. More stretch means more oxytocin. More oxytocin means more contractions. More contractions means more stretch. That's going to continue to amplify and everything increase each other, this cycle, until the baby is delivered. But let's actually draw out this feedback loop. Um, with our boxes, sorry. Okay, so our stimulus is um, baby dropping, which stretches the uterus. So stretches the cervix first, stretches the cervix. Um, this is the stimulus that's going to be detected by the sensor which our sensor receptors, where do you think? In the cervix. Those are going to send signals and the input signal is going to be a nervous signal that travels to the, the brain, CNS, and that's the control center. then sends oxytocin, a hormone, to the target, which is the uterus. The uterus is going to contract as the response. What does this do? This causes further amplification of the system, more stretch of the cervix, and then amplifying the system. Uh, the input signal here would be um, the, the axons, so a, a nerve, I'm gonna write nerve. Okay, so can you see how we go from this picture that doesn't have all of these these five boxes to the five boxes and practicing doing that. Um, that's part of it is practicing that. The other part of this um, of of this lesson is the difference between positive feedback that is acting to amplify the stimulus instead of decrease it, like negative feedback does. Negative feedback maintains the variable. All right. Now the learning check, kind of comparing, practicing whether something's positive or negative feedback.